if you take somebody who's my age, and let's say in the mid 80s or early 90s, they started buying gold. They saw the problems with the system. They had this distrust of state and money. They've been evangelizing to their family and friends and probably ridiculed for saying, buy this, buy this stuff. 30 years later, the vision hasn't fulfilled, but now the economic and political conditions start to align and they feel like ah, finally gold and silver's time has come. And out of left field, this punk rock thing comes in, <laughs> Great Bitcoin, yeah. and it completely blows up and supersedes this whole thing. I think the feeling would be, I've just wasted 30 years. Like I have 30 years of my life, not only financially invested in this other thing, but emotionally invested in this other thing. Don't buy gold, don't buy silver, Bitcoin's better. Bob Burnett is the CEO of Barefoot Mining, and he's worked in tech for more than 35 years and is a Bitcoin mining expert. He compares Bitcoin to past tech revolutions like the personal computer and warns against overinvesting in traditional assets like real estate. Bob shares how some investors who've long championed gold and silver are now considering Bitcoin as a better option. He emphasizes that Bitcoin isn't just an asset, it's a whole new way of thinking about money and the future. Before we get on with the video, we'd like to introduce our sponsor, Stamp Seed. Don't forget to follow the link in our description below for 15% off your stamping kit. Furthermore, 77% of our viewers on this channel are not yet subscribed. If you are enjoying this content and want to support our efforts, please hit that subscribe button and help our videos find more people. Without further ado, here is Bob Burnett on the Bitcoin for Millennials podcast. I was very aware that I had just worked for roughly a decade and a half in an industry that took a lot out of me. There was, you know, um, the personal computer industry of that era is very much like Bitcoin was. Like this was the, you know, I was, um, I don't want to back, get too dwelling on it, but like my my first project in 1986 was to be part of the design team of what I consider to be the world's first laptop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we were, we were doing things that had that same excitement and world changing implications that I believe Bitcoin has, you know, I, I, there's been a couple of those like in, in modern times, the personal computer, the internet, um, cell phones, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, Bitcoin, I think there's, there's only a handful that are in that stratosphere where you go, well, every aspect of society, is it personally business, government, social structures, like all these things, um, radically changed, right? Every industry yeah. is changed by them. I see a lot of people pour their wealth into real estate as an example and under this guise that it's an asset that has almost no downside to it. And they, they view real estate as scarce and they view it as a cash flowing asset. And there's all these passive income strategies and things like that, that are centered around it. They are a result, all those things and all that real estate is a result of the existing system. Right? Yeah. The way, the way money works and the desire of the world to store value in that asset. That's really why that happens. And so if either that system starts to fail or a better store of value becomes more apparent to people, then real estate can lose. So it, you know, I, I, I'm afraid for people that like get very leveraged like into real estate and think they have made it because they can have the whole system collapse on them too. When you talk to gold bugs, there are often people, say I'm, I'm almost 60, okay? I was born in 1964. If, if you take somebody who's my age and let's say in the mid 80s or early 90s, they started buying gold and 
they saw the problems with the system. They had this distrust of state and money, and they start buying gold. They start buying silver. They're buying all kinds of coins. They've been evangelizing to their family and friends and probably ridiculed for saying buy this, buy this stuff. It's almost like 30 years later, the vision hasn't fulfilled. But now the economic and political conditions start to align, and they feel like, ah, finally, gold and silver's time has come. And out of left field, this punk rock thing comes in, <laughs> Bitcoin, yeah. and it completely blows up and supersedes this whole thing. So, you know, you either embrace punk rock or at which point you have to essentially say i've i think the feeling would be i've just wasted 30 years like i have 30 years of my life not only financially invested in this other thing but emotionally invested in this other mm. thing and the, that's the harder part i think by the way i think that's the harder part is to to look in the mirror to look at these other people and say I'm sorry I was wrong. Don't buy gold. Don't buy silver. Bitcoin's better. Today's video is sponsored by Stamp Seed. Don't store your Bitcoin in cold storage without stamping your seed phrase on an indestructible titanium plate. Stamp Seed is fireproof, rust proof, impact proof, and easy to hide. It has no loose parts and will give you ultimate peace of mind that your Bitcoin is safe and sound for the long term. Click the link in the description below for 15% off your stamping kit. Welcome to Bit Intelligence. We are committed to bringing you top-notch Bitcoin-only content. Subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. Okay, back to the video. Bitcoin isn't just an asset. It's an entire ecosystem in and yeah. of itself. You could almost argue I would say that you and I are aligned like countrymen, mm -hmm. that, that I have that feeling about Bitcoiners that would rival my patriotic spirit. And, and you know, it's, it's because we have a mission to, we see a path to a way of life, not only for ourselves, but for our children and our grandchildren and those sort of things. I, I, gold, gold doesn't provide that, you know, mm. gold, no stock does, no gold does, you know, they, they're, they're like transactional things. They're not relationship things. Yeah. And so, you know, Bitcoin, and by the way, that's another problem into why do boomers struggle? Because it's very difficult for them to understand that Bitcoin is not just an asset. In fact, its its qualities as an asset are a small piece of what it is. I've gone through this development in my own life from starting with looking at Bitcoin maybe as a technology or asset to a realization that no, it it has become in many ways, the second most important thing in my life. What happens with Bitcoin, and I'm not talking about the price, I'm talking about the adoption, you know, getting the world to embrace it, is really the second most important thing because I, I believe almost all other ills on this earth are at least in a, a, a secondary way, if not a primary way, the result of the broken monetary system and manipulation by the state and those sort of things. And so um, living the ethos, which you, you mentioned before, you know, I try to do that personally, I try to run my company and all my investments from that same perspective, you know, do, do no harm to Bitcoin, do what's best for Bitcoin. If, if something benefits me personally, but harms Bitcoin, do I want to be involved in it? Um, and 
I think each of us, like to, to evaluate where you are in your Bitcoin discovery, you know, if, if somebody said, hey, I'm going to write you a check, I will call it for an obscene level of wealth, but it means that Bitcoin is going to either have a major setback or fail, what would you do? If the answer is, I'll take the money, okay, you know, um, but I, I'd say really ask that question, like, and, and really present it because some of you out there may actually get that opportunity at some point. Yeah, I, um, you know, I'll almost go back to what I said before about Bitcoin being almost like a country. And so I think my, my wife is a naturalized U.S. citizen. She became a U.S. citizen six or seven years ago. And I went to the ceremony where she took the, the, the oath and became a citizen. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think Bitcoin is much like that. It's more an oath to yourself. But like yes. I, I would view myself as I'm a citizen of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, because I believe in what it stands for and I will protect it. Yeah. That you take an oath to to it. And it usually says, hey, I'll abide by the laws. I believe in what it stands for. And I am willing to fight and die to protect these things. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where we are with a lot of us with Bitcoin. I mean, you make your own personal decision, but but that's why that's why we have this vigilance uh, about it is that that you cross a threshold. I wasn't there in 2017 and 2018. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you exactly what day that threshold was crossed. It was probably somewhere in that 18, 19 period. But now my my vigilance and loyalty is much, much stronger. You know, those who don't understand us probably look at it as fanatical. And I think that if we look at how people have, have come together in aligned groups before, it's typically either been because of country, which is primarily kind of some geographic and cultural assimilation mm -hmm. or religious. So this, I, I'm not a historian at that level, um, but it seems to me maybe this is the first time this we've reached this level of community of where, where there there is the, an ethos that that's strong that wasn't driven either by the state or by by religion. This is coming from a different yeah. place. Bob's insights into Bitcoin's revolutionary potential, backed by his extensive experience in tech and entrepreneurship, shed light on why this technology is so important for our generation. It's not just about investing in a new asset. It's about embracing a new way of thinking about money innovation and the future. As you explore the world of Bitcoin further, we encourage you to stay curious, keep learning, and engage with others who share your interest in this transformative technology. Together, we can shape a future where financial freedom is accessible to all. Stay tuned for more enlightening discussions and remember to subscribe for the latest recaps, insights and films about all things Bitcoin. If you want to watch another one of our podcast recaps, try this one here. We'll see you next time.